Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Bible study. So, um, as I usually do, this morning I'd like to start off with a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for being with us this morning, for revealing these amazing things to us in your word. And Father, I pray that we would just come today with open hearts, that we would hear the words you have. And Father, that, that you would continue to change us from the inside out. It is in your most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. All right, so good morning. Um, if you're catching our Bible study for the first time, please feel free to go back and catch all of the previous ones. It's been a fascinating series. Um, I've got them all hashtagged, so you can search the hashtag Bible study and part, you know, one through uh, today's 13, so one through whatever to catch up on um, any you might have missed. They're, uh, as I said, really fascinating. It's always interesting diving into the Word of God. So this morning we're actually going to be looking at hyssop, which has quickly become one of my favorite plants to study because of what the scripture has to say about it. So hyssop is my little bottle right there. Mm. It's one of the ones with the, the childproof cap. But hyssop smells, it's not the most pleasant smell. It kind of has a, a, a slightly astringent smell to it, which when you see how it was used in scripture, you'll understand why. Mm. But hyssop's a really good one, and I do love using it. So let us, let me pull out my notes, and we'll kind of look at hyssop and how it was used um, in biblical times and what it is. So hyssop is a shrub that kind of looks like lavender, although the flowers can be blue, pink, or white, whereas, of course, lavender, they just have that beautiful purple color um, and both hyssop and lavender are from the mint family so that's kind of why they resemble each other historically um, hyssop the leaves of the hyssop plant were used to make a strong tea to help with nose throat and lung afflictions and the oil was also applied to bruises so that is how it would have been used at the time um, and of course in scripture the primary use we find for hyssop was actually ritual cleansing and uh, ceremonial offerings. So if you look um, look up hyssop in your concordance, a lot of the mentions of hyssop are going to be in the book of Leviticus. And um, I think the book of Numbers, those two have a lot of mentions of hyssop because they're talking about um, the ritual cleansing uh, ritual cleansings. So um, when they were talking about the different kinds of leprosy and uh, what you had to do if you'd been healed, yes, you had to cleanse with hyssop was part of that. And then uh, same thing if there was mold in the home um, and it was clean, you know, it was um, deemed usable after, you know, the, the mold, then you had to still cleanse it with hyssop. So, uh, fascinating stuff. It, hyssop is very, very strongly associated with cleansing mm -hmm. um, in the Bible. So, all right. Now comes the fun part. We're going to actually look at some uses of hyssop. Um, <clears throat> let's kind of set the scene here. So, Israel and his family had moved to Egypt, remember, because there was this horrible drought. His son, Joseph, who he thought was dead, is actually running the whole country. And he says, come live here and I will um, take care of all of you. Mm -hmm. So they moved to Egypt and they ended up staying like 400 years. And um, at that time, they had become, the entire nation had become slaves <clears throat> to a pharaoh that didn't know Joseph. So um, obviously different pharaoh pops, probably a different dynasty that had no association whatsoever with Joseph. So they had enslaved um, all of the Israelites. And the people cried out, and um, the Lord chose Moses to work through to deliver them. <clears throat> and part of that was he started sending all of these plagues in order to get Pharaoh to let them go. 
right? And so nine plagues, there's water turning into blood, there's frogs, there's flies, there's boils. I mean, it's some, including the, the ninth one was like three days of darkness. And, <clears throat> you know, Pharaoh's heart was hard and he still said, no, 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 I'm not going to let you go and worship your God. You have to stay here and serve me. And then the last plague, the last plague shows up and it is the death of the firstborn. Truly horrible. So God says, I will distinguish between my people and yours. And this is how he chooses to do it. So if you turn to Exodus, and this one I, I do have marked, chapter, Exodus chapter 12. Yes, Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 through 23, okay, um, <clears throat> is where we're going to pick up. So Moses is telling the Israelites what they have to do to be distinguished from the Egyptians during this final plague, the death of the firstborn. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourselves according to your families and kill the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. All right. So here's where, here's what we got. <clears throat> so the people were to take a lamb, a perfect lamb, and kill it. They were to collect the blood in a bowl. All right. So let me see if I can back up a little bit here so you can get a better, better view. All right. <clears throat> So they collect the blood in a bowl, and then they take a hyssop bunch, right, and they dip it in the blood, and they strike the lentil, and then they do it again. They dip, and they strike the doorpost, and they do it again, and they strike the other doorpost. You see what I just did there? The sign of the cross was in blood on their doors. And when the Lord saw the cross in blood, he passed over them, and they did not die. Because it points to our perfect Passover lamb, Jesus, who came and took our death. So that we didn't have to die. So as they're doing this, the hyssop leaves are being bruised. So the smell of hyssop is intermingling with the blood as they are striking the doorposts and <clears throat> doing, uh, foretelling Christ's death at that first Passover. Ah, it gets me every time. <laughs> So, um, let's see, where were we? So, of course, later on, hyssop has to be present at Christ's death because it was present at that first Passover, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, let's see. Uh, you know, he's being crucified, which is the most gruesome, form of torture that man has been able to come up with and um, so uh, <clears throat> at on the cross they're offering Jesus some wine and the first one he refuses so when you go to John chapter 19 verses 28 through 30 it says later knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled. Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. 
So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant. See, there's hyssop. And lifted it to Jesus' lips. And when he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Um, so, uh, the wine was lifted up on his up, right? So, it was believed that the use of hyssop at crucifixions may have helped in some small way to ease the suffering of those being crucified, as it is extremely soothing to the lungs when inhaled. Victims of crucifixion, of course, die from suffocation um, due to the weight of their own bodies pulling down on them and their lungs filling with fluid. It is excruciating. Um, and hyssop is supportive to the respiratory system and helps break up nasal fluid. Mm -hmm. So in some small way, they were trying to show kindness by, um, by using hyssop. And so think about this. As Christ took his final breath, one of the last things he smelled was hyssop, mm -hmm. which is just wow. Um, and of course, marked with you know the the intermingled with the smell of blood and and everything else but the the hyssop and the blood were present at his crucifixion just like they were at that very first passover mm. so um as like i was saying um about frankincense uh on tuesday the same is true for hyssop it points back to christ Every time I smell it, I can't help but think of what he has done for me. Mm. And, um, you know, it, it's interesting. Interesting. Mm. So think about this. When the uh, Israelites left Egypt, they didn't just leave. God had them plunder all of Egypt. They were... <clears throat> The Egyptians were so ready to get them gone after all of these plagues that he had, when the Israelites went to their neighbors, the Egyptians, and said, you know, give us, give us your treasures. They were like, here, take them and go, right? <clears throat> take them and go. Just go. <laughs> take, take all of it, but go, because we can't take all of these plagues anymore. Egypt is ruined. So, included in those treasures, it wouldn't have just been metals and gems, right? It would have been all of the spices that were needed for the holy anointing oil and the holy incense that God had them make later. They already had to have all of the ingredients because they were wandering around in the wilderness. And they may have come across traitors. But the bulk of what they used, they had to have with them. Mm -hmm. So you figure all of those precious spices and oils had to have come from Egypt when they plundered it as they left. And they were in the desert 40 years of like a million people. <laughs> this was, we're not talking about small amounts of spices. We're talking huge amounts of precious spices that they carried with them out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And that includes things like hyssop and myrrh and frankincense and cassia and all of these other spices that we mentioned, you know, earlier when we looked at the holy anointing oil and the holy incense. Just uh, interesting, interesting. And they carried it with them to the promised land. And that was what I had for this morning. So I will see you guys again next week. I hope you have a wonderful day and just a blessed week as you continue to contemplate um, the glory of God. Mm. So good morning, and I'll see you later. Mm.